So I'm here to talk to you about Make Mathematics. Uh, it's a project that's being run at uh, O'Reilly, but actually a subdivision of O'Reilly called Make. And just for a show of hands, how many of you have heard of Make or Make Magazine or? Okay, very good, very good. Um, so just, I want to give you a little bit of a genealogy here of where all this stuff came from. Because I think it's quite interesting, just the connection between Wolfram Research and O'Reilly at the moment. Um, these two companies were started right around the mid-80s, right around the same time, um, by two geniuses. Um, there's a lot in common with these companies. First thing you notice is that they both named the companies after themselves, okay? So they weren't shy. Um, there are two extraordinary brands in their areas. Um, they're extremely loved, um, but they've, they've held tight. They are private companies. Um, no plans of going public ever. They, they, they want to control um, their brand, their image, everything like that. So very good companies. And right after Stephen started Mathematica, um, Jerry Yule, uh, another genius, um, Jerry Yule uh, wondered if he could make a reform calculus project out of it. And so he started the Calculus Mathematica project, I believe in 88, 89 range. Um, and then shortly after that, they started an online version of, of that, which <coughs> is still running today, called NetMath, and Deborah Woods runs that today. Um, this was a huge inspiration to me. I had taught many times before, uh, many different ways. I'd use calculators, I'd use standard lectures, I'd use everything. And I started giving oral exams to my, my students, and I kept finding out that my a students, the people who did written work was perfect, really didn't know what they were doing. And that depressed me for a while, and I got out of teaching for a while and just was doing research. But I got talked into trying the Calculus Mathematica stuff, and that changed my life. And so uh, in reaction to that, I decided that I wanted to go try to change education. So I started a company called User Active here in Champaign. Um, and we grew and ended up partnering with O'Reilly, and then O'Reilly ended up buying us. And then that became the O'Reilly School of Technology, which is running today. And that's, that's my division at O'Reilly. Um, and then Dale Doherty, another genius, started Make. And he started this whole new movement, or at least gave a movement that existed a name um, and, and communitized that movement. And that's Make. And you know, their motto is, if you can't open it, you don't own it. All right? so, um, they have maker fairs they, in San Mateo, they have them in Detroit, they have them in, in New York City. The one in San Mateo gets 200,000 people showing up. And these are people who don't want to just see what other people have made. These are people who want to make things. Okay? Um, and then he approached me because he knew about our educational stuff because he's being approached by people from all over the country, all walks of life, government people, teachers, parents, they're all approaching them because they want, to, they want to change education and they want to use this making things, um, this idea that, that people can build and learn by building things. Um, they want that. And so now, make is actually making more money. One of the things they're making is money. Um, they want to make, you know, uh, they, they're making more money on selling kits along with instructions that are going to schools, okay? Um, and so we combined up, and he said, what can we do with math? And I said, aha, I have an idea, right? And that's how we come up with Make Mathematics. Okay, so this is definitely a, you know, me coming home and, and bringing everything full circle um, with this, and I'm very proud of it. Um, so what is Make Mathematics? So um, it's a platform. And it's a teaching platform. And, we, and it's a teaching platform that supports something that we call a maker cube. What's a maker cube? Well, a maker cube is a tightly integrated, tightly integrated, built together um, system for teaching. Um, it, we, we combine tools, content, and learning management systems from the ground up. So we're not just grabbing a learning management system off the shelf, we're not just grabbing content off the shelf, and we're not just grabbing tools off the shelf, and then trying to get them to work together. 
We are built, we're, we're changing them and getting them to work together in such a way that we can control the workflow of both the instructor and the student so that we can control the pedagogical and the instructional design of what's going on to make things most effective and most efficient. And the reason we had to do that, the reason we learned to do that, and here's some of the advantages of this, okay, um, of a maker cube. And once we started thinking about these maker cubes, we realized that maker cubes have always existed. They were called apprenticeships. So when you went to apprentice, what you got, you got content, and you got tools, and you got feedback, all at the same place. And our educational system, in order to become scalable, broke the apprentice system and started using the, uh, the factory method of teaching, right? The Henry Ford factory method, where we just move students around and, you know, in, in big chunks. Um, because that was more scalable. And that actually got more people educated. But it really wasn't superior to the apprentice system. But now with computers, okay, um, certain subjects, we can actually go back to an apprentice-like system and make it more scalable than the factory method. Um, it's easy, easy to distribute. Um, we can manage workflow. Um, it's efficient and effective. I'm going to try to demonstrate that to you today. Um, instant updates and fixes. You know, when you have a server-based system, right, you're constantly working on it. You're constantly distributing it. You know, I think Google is the greatest example of that type of activity where you're constantly adding on without having to have releases all the time. Um, and it's easy to support. So when you got, if you have a student in Japan who is, you know, working on a, uh, working on taking your class, um, you know, it's much easier to support that person if you are in control of that technology that person's using. Um, Whoops, lost my, uh, there it is. Um, turns out that for like the last 15 years, we've been making maker cubes for the Rise School technology. And so far, we have three different ones. And um, you have to make a different maker cube for each type of technology because you're changing tools. And when you change those tools, you, you may have to change aspects about the, the, the learning management system. You may have to change aspects about the content. So for instance, we have, we have an Eclipse based. You guys know Eclipse is an IDE, open source IDE, used, uh, used by programmers all over the world. Um, we actually had to change how it works so that we can deliver content inside of it and put all the hand in functionality inside of it so everything is wrapped in, inside of this tool. So everything is all integrated together. Um, we made our own called Code Runner, it's a web based IDE. Ajax driven web based IDE. Um, it's our favorite one because it's the easiest to support. Um, the web based things are much, much better, much easier to support, and your students and customers are much happier um, in this kind of mode. And then we have one for Visual Studio, and we had to change Visual Studio to adapt to this stuff. So the Math Maker Cube, the one you people here are going to be most interested in, is it's the same concept. But here we're, we're taking Mathematica and we're making a custom version of Mathematica. We call it Hilbert internally and kind of externally a little bit. And then we're, we found an um, over-engineered learning management system that is completely based on web services so we could customize everything. So what, what we've done and what we're actively doing now is building these maker cubes um, so that more and more people can get involved and, and do this. Okay, so this, this is a handed in notebook, if you will, okay? But this is completely web-based, right? But it looks like Mathematica and acts like Mathematica, and we feel like that's important because of the way that this is taught, okay? So you shift enter, you get output. Um, you know, you can create new cells, you know, anything you want to do, you can create new cells. And notice since this is the instructor side, you know, it's, it makes it so that we, we automatically designate what the instructor is writing, and we automatically designate what the student is writing, okay? 
And then I can just hand this in. I can, I can, you know, whatever. This is great. This is completely awesome. Here, let me see. What do you do, Deborah? This is all Deborah. So this is something Deborah wrote just quickly last mm -hmm. night. So I type something in, and then I hand it back. Okay, and I'm not going to pass her on that one. And then it takes it off my queue. So we use a queue-based system. Um, your role as instructor, you know, when you're grading, is just to to empty this queue. And so the feedback loop is, since everything comes up on the web, you, you, the, the, uh, the student basically writes their stuff up in their, in their thing. They don't have to manage any files. And they hand stuff in, goes, so it's very quick, very efficient. Now, what has happened, let me go back to slides here. Um, we're still not released, as you see, um, but we're running a beta test right now with one class at the University of Illinois. And in a little bit, I'll let, uh, and that's being run by Bruce Carpenter here, and I'll let him say something about how that's going. Um, we, still need to, uh, we still need to get some things more scalable on our server side. We still need to um, get the content editing and the forums up. Um, let me show you one more thing. Okay? Another nice thing that you can do once, once you've sort of liberated Mathematica from the traditional front end is that you, we, can now, we can now use this to do, a, to do forums and to do like a, I don't know if you guys have seen Stack Overflow or Math Overflow. We can, we can now actually do all of this stuff in Mathematica, right? So now people can actually share Mathematica in forums and in all these places which makes communication much better. This is mainly going to be used to support our instructors. So um, when instructors start to do this, some of these people will or will not be very proficient in Mathematica. And they're going to need places to go and ask questions about what their students are asking them. So initially here, we're going, my staff, we're going to be there answering all these questions for these instructors. But eventually the community will take over just like on Stack Overflow and Math Overflow, and then help support all that. Um, so what's the adoption cycle? So um, one of the biggest, one thing you might notice is that this Calculus Mathematica project has only, you know, it's been kind of stuck here at the University of Illinois. It had a, it, you know, some other inspired people at Ohio State did it for a while, um, but it hasn't really spread. So if what we're saying is so great, you know, what's the problem? How come it's just at the University of Illinois? Well, um, it takes an enormous effort to adopt what is currently there. If, if you wanted to take the, this style of teaching to your school without a platform, um, you're going to run into all types of uh, barriers. You have to get Mathematica for everybody. You've got to get Mathematica on all your servers. You've got to have Mathematica for all these people. You've got to find a, a learning management system. And learning management systems aren't set up to handle ma Mathematica. Okay? So now you've got a learning management system. Now you have to have people managing that learning management system. Then, beyond that, to run the course, you have to, you have to, to get the content to everybody, okay? which are also files. And when they hand things in, they're files. So imagine getting 40, 50, 60 files a couple times a week that you have to open, name, write something in, save, and then get them back, okay? That's a lot of overhead, and it's not really related to the learning. So that causes cognitive overload on the student, cognitive overload on the instructor, and it's really, it just takes a lot of effort. You have to really believe in it. Well, with a platform, we can take away all of those objections and all of those barriers, and we can get right down to teaching. Um, uh, so our adoption cycle is essentially instructors come in, they sign up for an account, um, they choose their course materials, they can move them around, make some edits, um, they set their course parameters, their timelines, um, they activate a course, and once a course is activated, they send their students to a, a custom page that gets built automatically once they activate their course, and then um, students come, they buy access, at our colleges in the United States, our students are buying their resources. So students buy access, and they're off and running. Okay? Easy as that. 
No other, nothing else. They don't, they don't have to involve anyone else in this process. Um, so why are we doing this? Well, the number one answer is because I promised uh, my hero, Jerry Yule, that I would do it, right? Um, I, I, made a, I made a personal promise to him. But, um, but we also really, really believe in this strongly, okay? No one is going to convince me otherwise, and no one's going to convince my team otherwise. But um, I look at it like this modified Lockhart's Rament. Basically, essentially, what we've been teaching. So in Lockhart's Lament, he wakes up from a nightmare, and he finds that music is being taught just by teaching notes. No music, right? It's just notes on paper, right? They take tests, notes on paper. You know, there's, then there's standardized tests and, and uh, SATs, notes on paper, right? How many people would like music, right? Hardly anybody would like music. So, so he says, well, listen, we need to teach them to hear the music, right? Now, I modify that. I, it's not only do we need to teach them to hear the music, we need to teach them to play the music. So we should be teaching math like they teach music. We should be giving them an instrument where they can play around with the music before they are faced with the notes. And we have an instrument, and that instrument is Mathematica. Okay? And, and my job is to make it easy for people to get their instrument and to be able to get feedback and to be able to, to march through courses, to make new courses. Um, I already talked about this. It's too difficult to top. There's no platform. There's been no marketing community building. Right? It's just a department here on their own. Um, but I'm, I'm at a very strong um, marketing and community building company. So we, we got that handled. Um, so we're running a beta test at UIUC now. Um, I'll let Bruce tell you how that's going. I'm very excited about the Make Mathematics platform because it really is an integrated way. It, handles all of the infrastructure, all the file transfers, and all those things have faded into the woodwork. And I can concentrate on giving students immediate feedback. And I've been able to do something now that I've never been able to do before. It was always so difficult to try to allow students to make mistakes and redo work and turn it in again, because it's daunting, the idea of like, I'm going to have to go through another round of file, upload and download. But now, Students turn in their stuff, I go into the Make Mathematics platform, I bring it up, make some comments, ship it off. They work on the file again, they hand it back in, I make some more comments, and that can go on as many times as necessary for the students to learn the concepts. And what I've noticed, there's a big difference. I'm actually running, I'm teaching linear algebra with the Make Mathematics platform this semester, and it's been night and day. It's the same content, but now students from the very first day, as soon as they log in, they're up and running. They're making mathematics using Mathematica through the, the web interface. They do their work, they hand it in, I give them feedback, and I'm now able to allow them to redo their work, not just redo calculations, but if their explanations aren't sufficient. I can give them feedback about you need to explain this more. They hand it back in, I make some more comments. that round-robin process eventually means that they grapple with the material deeper and I'm finding out that their later homework is improving dramatically. The quality of their answers is rising dramatically versus what it was under the old program. That immediate feedback has had a huge impact on student learning. So it seems to be very going well. I gave my first round of exams and I've been teaching linear algebra long enough to have collected statistics. Um, these, this class doesn't seem to be any different than any other class in terms of the composition, but the performance on the exams has been amazing. Um, again, this is anecdotal. I haven't collected a, any statistics on it because it's still a beta test, but I plan on doing some studies as soon as this um, technology comes and becomes widespread. So I'm very happy with how it's going so far, and stay tuned. Hopefully that will continue to go well.